Well, hello everybody. It's Doug Rucker here with DougRuckerSchool.com and DougRuckerStore.com. Hey, just going to continue in the series of trying to help you guys that want to do your own installs and also for our customers that buy equipment um, and want to do their own install. So today I'm talking about how to plumb and install a Topaz float valve. So we've got that coming up next. Okay guys, so for the purpose of this video, showing you how to install a Topaz uh, float valve. That's the only float valve that we sell. Um, I Many years ago, I used the Hudson float valve, but we just always had issues with them working and then not working. We'd look over and see the tanks overfilling. We'd try to fix it, it'd work for a little while. I finally just got tired of them and we went to these Job float valves and they actually will allow you to have more water in your tank as well as uh, just better overall float valve. We've never had an issue with one of these so we've been installing them on our builds for a while, a couple years at least. Um, and this is what it looks like inside. You can see it acts much like a toilet valve inside of a toilet and that that this little arm here hey Ramonda stick your arm on that and just kind of raise it up yeah just move it there you go so that will raise up when the water gets full and shut the water off and then when you are using your machine it lowers back down and it'll start filling up so basically what's happening is when you hook your water hose up and this is the water hose reel and it's got flexella hose on it and it goes to a brass barb right here that we hook the hose on to and then from the swivel we're taking clear braid hose and we're going all the way over to here to a bulkhead and then that's a three quarter inch bulkhead with a three quarter inch threaded by three quarter inch barb banjo connector uh, threaded to barb three quarter inch on both sides okay so inside is the float valve hey guys don't forget you can go to pressurewashingschool.com slash events and check out all of our training opportunities uh, we've got coming up in march april may not march april may and june our hands-on training right here in Houston, Texas. And then also coming up in Atlanta in June, I think it's 21st, 22nd, 20th through the 23rd, something like that, I can't remember. It's three days, a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, you can get all the information at pressurewashingschool.com slash events for that. Uh, hands-on training as we teach you how to clean out in the field. And then we've got hands-on parking lot striping training with Jeffrey Blackman. And then on that Saturday is the Difference Makers Business Conference. So get signed up for that. Um, it's going to fill up pretty quick. We've already had a lot of interest in that. And then also don't forget about the online video school uh, where you can sit in the comfort of your home and learn how to start and operate your pressure washing, soft washing, roof cleaning, concrete cleaning, all of that um, right there on the online video school. So um, check out all of that. And I hope, uh, hope to see everybody either here in Houston or definitely in hot Atlanta. And inside is the bottom, of course, of the bulkhead, which we thread the float valve on to. So we have a lot of people that have asked us about, can you install the Topaz float valve at the top of a tank or does it have to be on the side? And you can absolutely install it either way. Ramundo is going to show you how he does it uh, when he does, he does all the builds. And so when he's doing it at the top of the tank, go ahead, Ramundo. Whenever I do it on top of the tank, I always get a straight elbow, a 90 degree straight elbow. So first I mount the, the bulkhead and then I put everything on into the bulkhead, the 90 and then the float down.
you can actually do everything on the outside and then just put the bulkhead with everything on it already and then just bolt, uh, bolt it in. And then just put your three quarter by three quarter 90 or if you want a straight, you can put a straight. That's just preference. Yeah, I always suggest you use the 90 so that your hose is coming straight. Um, if you use, I mean, the hose is coming straight off. If you use a straight where it's going straight up, then the hose has got to bend to come down and that clear braid hose can actually kink. So basically hold it up there to show them that's what it looks like inside of your tank. And so when that float valve goes up, like Raimundo's moving, the water is going to shut off and stop filling the tank. And then as you start using the water, it lowers itself down and the water starts filling up. And the water comes out of down here, the bottom. Yes, down here. Okay, right here. And so the other nice thing about the Topaz over the Hudson is these will actually fill a lot faster. You're getting more water through it. So that's how we set up the float valve. So Ramondo, if it's going to the side of the tank, they're not going to use that slip 90. Yeah, I don't need a, none of that. A, I can always just mount it like that and have to get the adapters right. that we do have in the store. Um, or you can now always put a bulkhead on the side with another bar or right. a straight. And so this is a three quarter. By three quarter 90. By three quarter slip street 90 is what they call it. So it's threaded here and it's threaded on the inside too. This is the same thing that, you know, we use like on our big slinger, um, the softy uh, for connecting the blend valves. So basic, simple. Um, a lot of people ask, do you know offhand what size hole saw you're using? No. It all depends on the bulkhead because sometimes we have two different brands of bulkheads. Yes. Um, so uh, you just really have to match it up, the bulkhead uh, threaded part that goes into the tank. Just match your hole saw up to that and make sure it's not too much larger than the threaded piece and that's the hole saw size that you would use. So there's actually another thing on manually on the side is that you're gonna lose a lot of water. Right. Because you have to come so low for the float to be able to go up and not be hitting on top of the tank. Yep, and that's why we, every time we can, we try to do it at the top. Some cases, just depending on the, you know, variables of the rig install that we're doing, we have to do it on the side and depending on the tank and all. And I think you've even installed them in some caps before, haven't you, in the lids? Uh, no, not no, in the lids. You haven't? Okay. You can, but I have never done it. Yeah, okay, so you could, but uh, we have not done that. I thought we had, but anyway. Uh, so yeah, that's how you install a Topaz float valve. If you have any questions, just uh, be sure to let us know. Okay, guys, I hope this Topaz, Topaz float valve uh, installation video has helped y'all quite a bit. Hey, don't forget Atlanta coming up in June. Um, and then, of course, the hands-on trainings, all the, all the training opportunities we have, just go to pressurewashingschool.com. You can click uh, or do slash events, and that'll take you right to the schedule. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope you all have a very, very blessed day. Hey, this is Carlos from Atlanta, and I can't even tell you to begin to tell you what an amazing experience we had at this conference. But as Jeff was saying a while ago, it all starts with a vision. It's not my this machine right here, it's what's called your gray coat, I mean your Titan 3500. And that is your gray coat laser line 3400.